Hey guys, Doka Gaming here and welcome back to another FSX video. Today I'm going to show you Avlasoft EFB or electronic flight bag. A number of you who watch my stream asked me to do a video and I'm more than happy to do a video because EFB is my favorite bit of software for FSX. I absolutely love EFB. Uh, I've been using it for a number of years um, it costs about 46 pounds or about 76 dollars um, it is just absolutely fantastic I use it mainly for the heavies uh, for doing IFR flights and I'll be honest if if, uh, if I don't have it I I feel really lost with it you know if I can't get it connected or something like that which is very rare I do feel lost without it it is absolutely fantastic I have mine networked on a um, different PC um, but I will show you a little bit more of that um, I have it on another on another screen so I have it um, yeah just displayed so I can see what I'm doing where I am who's online etc etc but I will go through that with you in a bit more detail so what is um, Avlasoft EFB well I'm just going to read it straight off their website the electronic flight bag for Microsoft Flight Simulator X and Prepared 3D replaces the traditional and cumbersome flight bag and its paperwork with a compact yet yeah, comprehensive digital format no longer will you have to fiddle with many pieces of paper during your flight minimize paperwork in the cockpit and get faster access to data required for takeoff and landings en route and even emergencies so that's basically it it replaces yeah you are having to open up different websites for charts printing off bits of paper all that type of thing this is all done in one simple single package and as I said I just have it running on a different machine and I have a different and a running on a different monitor so it's easily uh, I can easily access it when I when I need it um, I'm going to do the video in two parts uh, the one part will be the uh, display unit what you're looking at now and the other one will be the data provider so once I've explained everything with the display unit I'll just quickly stop and then go over to the data provider on the other machine uh, talking about the data provider and display unit because I'm running mine on a networked machine you've got to have the display unit on your network PC and you've got to have the data provider on your main FSX machine but as I said I'll talk about that in a bit more detail so let's get straight to it the first thing I'm going to do is show you um, the system guys um, this is just basically how to use EFB I'm not going to go through every single setting of how to set it up I will show you the basics of it but what I want to do is just show you um, how to get a flight up and running how to contact ATC um, and things like that so yeah alright so the first thing is the system uh, we're going to the settings so the first thing as I said I'm running mine off on a network PC so you can see it's in uh, it says remote and that's my PC name of my main uh, FSX machine alright folders and links make sure that you've linked this provider data folder is linked to um, the Avlasoft EFB data folder and that as I said is sitting on my other machine so you can see I've networked it straight to that so it's sitting in my app data local Avlasoft EFB uh, data provider alright and then the, the rest is just default these are just sitting locally on my network machine and again this uh, that root this root finder I can't remember if I actually put these in um, I might have if it might be on the instructions but I think it's just default alright charts uh, I'm not going to go through too much with this but this is basically the available groups within each of um, the different screens on the display unit so we've got ground approach arrival departure en route so it just shows you uh, which communication groups you want so you can um, select which groups you want you can untick them uh, then you got a few more options down at the bottom here uh, for different things you can show runway identities um, 
show the vectors to runways, show runway dimensions in feet instead of meters. So it's all really straightforward. You need to just play around, see what you want, what uh, what what works for you. These are my settings. Again, I've kept these mainly default. I haven't fiddled around with any of these. Um, there are one or two, but I will show you what I've uh, what I fiddled around with. So, all right. So those um, colors, again, straightforward. It shows you um, your water. You've got a day. You've got a day view and a night view. I'll show you that in a bit more detail. So you can change that to the different colors, the compass route, the grid, earth surface. Again, very straightforward. Tool toolbar. Uh, this is the toolbar on the left here. You can have that top, bottom, right, left, whatever, whatever floats your boat really. So, and then you can show the text below the buttons as well. You can untick that or tell. Let's actually tick that. I don't think I've ever used that. So, all right, traffic. This is if you want to see if you uh, logged on to IVAO or Vatsim, you can uh, view traffic near you. So um, just make sure you have the right ticks. Again, all these colors, um, I've kept these all default. Yeah, these are all default. So um, these are the colors on the ground, of planes on the ground. And this is uh, the planes at night. Um, so that's it. And then that's the alert if you if you close by to another plane. You can change that as well, and then miscellaneous. You can um, change the different colours of the of the plane. Uh, so, if I want uh, dark green, there we go at colour day, or if I want night time, I can change it to blue. That doesn't look very good. I think I have had a green before. That's uh, a little bit dark. You want something quite light, actually. Red is good. Red is good. So, but again, something uh, for you guys to play around with. So, all right. So that's under charts. Weather. Um, I use Active Sky Next. So you need to link the the current snapshot. That's the text file you need. That you need to make sure that it's pointing to that. So I have it in Apps Data Roaming Hi-Fi Active Sky Next Weather. Current weather snapshot, and there it is. There, if you're running uh, Opus, Rex, uh, FS Real Weather, and FSGRW, can't remember what that one stands for again, but there you go, guys. If you're running any of those, if you're not running any of those, it will just pick it up the normal NOAA weather, the aviation weather gov. I think that's an American website, so you can just add that. All right. Flight information, again, I've left this all standard. So show flight information panel, showed error, red arrow, deviation indicator, uh, use the first altitude restriction and approach, adjust cruise altitude, round feet to 500 instead of 100. So guys, again, I've not really touched any of these. Uh, this is all default. Show top of climb and top of descent, that's quite a cool one. Uh, again, daytime, nighttime, and you can change the different colors, whatever you want. Uh, show ground speed and altitude beneath aircraft symbol. I've unticked that. Um, and then the other one is if you want some sounds. So waypoint pass, you can just search for a sound and it will play a sound once you've um, reached that. And then a transition altitude as well, which is actually quite nice. Um, I was actually looking at this the other day. I'm really bad with, um, you know, going past the transition altitude, um, and and with putting off my landing lights as well. I actually wish there wish there was one for landing lights, but never mind. Um, so once you've passed your transition altitude, um, you can play a little sound as well, which is quite handy as well. All right, so that's flight information. Uh, online okay this is an interesting one and again I will show you this a bit more detail so if you linked with uh, Vatsim or if you fly with Vatsim or IVAO um, you can add these files and you will then
get all the information to see who is online um, on the VATSIM network or who's online on the RVAO network and what I'll do guys I will add all these um, these files below you'll see them below there's a link below so you can download them and then add them to um, the VATSIM boundary files and the VATSIM definition files so you can add that and then you can see who is online uh, on VATSIM and I will do the same for IVAO the link, uh, the link is below you can add that I don't fly on IVAO so that's why I've got it blank and again um, this is a, another color chart to see you can basically change the different colors of uh, of of approach and departure a staff tower um, ATC controller all that type of thing you can change this and I'll show you um, what it looks like once we get to um, the display unit so again this is all just personal preference you can change whatever you want all right and then the unicom frequency as if you if, if you not um, if there's no ATC online just put the default which is 1228 I'm not too sure what the RVO, RVAO uh, Unicom is I think it's 122 as well so um, and then you can put tower radius as well 10 nautical miles and departure radius as well 30 nautical miles so the next is uh, miscellaneous so in pilot's name you can put your full name or nickname or whatever you fancy uh, current aircraft you can change that to whichever aircraft you're going to fly uh, you can create a new aircraft here as well you can click on uh, new manufacturer the type uh, descent angle you can change all that and save it and then you can put it in there so that's pretty straightforward okay uh, the other options here are fuel weight in kilograms I like using kilograms uh, inhibit max flight time below cruise altitude show wind direction arrow nearby aircraft uh, show aircraft if moving map is not active uh, so a number of different uh, options yeah, touch screen if you've got a touch screen monitor you can click that and that's it so good good alrighty that is basically the settings uh, next I want to show you is okay I showed you the aircraft editor yeah aircraft editor that's that's fairly straightforward you can see these are my different aircrafts I fly with so okay uh, checklist editor okay this is really nice this is really nice basically uh, it has a checklist uh, on, on uh, uh, a built-in checklist so the one I have only got uh, activated and I actually just did it for this video is the dash Q400 so basically what you need to do is go to their website alright there's the Avalosoft website and I'll come back to this because I want to show you one or two other things and you go to download and you click on checklist and there you have all the different checklists what you want so you've got the Airbus X you got the A2A Cessna which is really nice uh, the PMDG Beecraft 1900D the Carinado one uh, PMDG 747-400 the NGX the Majestic software the Q400 etc etc alright so you just download those and then what you do is you say import checklist and then you search for the downloaded file what you what you just got from the website and then you'll see that it will populate all this yeah in the checklist category so the en route the arrival and all that okay that's for the Q400 if you've got uh, just say the Airbus 320 I don't but again you just click import you search for it and you then it will all show up like it did for the Q400 and then once I show you once we go into the route setup I will we'll come back to this but that's basically how to add a checklist which is really handy so alright uh, and then menu position okay you can put it up the top there uh, I don't really like that one there 
you see now I've got myself confused now there we go <laughs> uh, sister there we go sister there you go so that's that alright and then you can switch it off good good so the next we go to modules uh, the only one I really use is library uh, and within this I've linked up some Navigraph charts so you click on Navigraph charts and there you can pick up all the different charts and that so so if we want to go to uh, where's one I notice uh, Newcastle no that's not Newcastle uh, let's see what that is EGNT that is Newcastle I was right it is Newcastle so there you can just access your charts quite easily which is great so you can all you can view them like that which is really nice and handy you can just click close there it takes a little slow sometimes and then you can search for another one let's see we can look who is that in Algeria okay Ananaba <laughs> and there again you can view all your different runways, your stars, your SID, ILS, the aerodome so okay let's close that which is really nice and handy to have and then I want to show you so go back one more uh, the other thing is uh, the flight logs so once you're in flight logs um, you can see this is where you need to make sure uh, the flight logs are going so it's uh, documents Avlosoft EFB user data flight logs and it records basically all your flights so let's look for one. Oh, there's my um, Gatwick to Innsbruck what I did the other day my video so let's click on that one and what it does it basically just puts it into like a PDF, PDF format um, and it just tells you IFR flight log from Gatwick to Innsbruck the aircraft type the pilot in command Dirk Durka, remember that was that name we saw earlier the date what time I set off the takeoff the touchdown uh, minus 40 uh, the block on flight time fuel used etc uh, etc et and then it gives you all the different waypoints the distance to distance remain position so it gives if, if it's it's quite handy just to see some extra information on that so all right so that's that let's come out of that let's go back um, the next is the meta so we can see the weather so we need to change that to active sky because remember I'm picked up active sky and then what we can do is so let's do Gatwick NGKK uh, so it's picked up Gatwick get airport data and there we go it shows the meta it's showing the meta now for Gatwick so the temperature is 15 Q&H airport elevation uh, surface visibility greater than 10 kilometers the wind so 302 at 10 so I would imagine they're taken off from 26 today um, and the meta code and that's it so really quite handy as well nice to see before you start flying um, that's it really I don't use anything else uh, airport I will go back to the, we'll come back to this once we set up a route so all right so the next is route setup and this is the main bit of EFB this is where it all gets interesting so what you need to do first of all is click the select okay and you've got a number of different options here alright I will show you each one so EFB routes is basically if you've saved any previous routes um, as an EFB uh, extension and I'll show you how to do that they will come up here okay we I don't have any 
so that's why they're not seeing so that's the one so if you click on there you just click open and it will show you all right the next one is that route so again it just opens up and, I'm, and you can get that route on the internet as well so for example we do e g k k to e h a m and we click go all right there it is there so it's showing us an altitude a route so clacton um, the airway and then redfer all right and there egkk and we click ok and there we go so it's populated gatwick into the origin and skipple into the destination all right and then it's put in the different waypoints we will be flying on it doesn't put your cruise altitude you need to do that so I think it's only 23,000 okay and it's IFR and then you can change the aircraft there so we're flying in a dash Q400 and I will come back to the VATSIM thing yeah guys I will come back to that and then you click activate but I'm not going to go through all that yet I want to just show you how to add a route okay so that's one way the other way was route finder so once you're in route finder uh, we can put it in our departure and destination so let's go EGKK and let's go to uh, Paris this time so LFPG and we click find route searching for it now and there you go it's picked that up London Gatwick to Paris Charles de Gaulle and you click OK and there you go it's added that into um, the route setup alright the other option and this is the one I like is save routes go under the save route and I go to Microsoft flight plan and basically there you go you can see all my flight plans so what I do is I save my flight plans in PFPX so I start working out all my my route my fuel all that type of thing in PFPX and then when I go save it I save a Microsoft flight plan as well and it saves them in here and then I can just come in here and choose which one so for example there's that one from Gatwick to Innsbruck so I just click on that and click open and there you go and there's our, our flight plan to uh, Innsbruck and as I said it populates the origin the destination um, it's this time it has populated the cruise altitude even though that is very wrong um, it's because it's picking up PFPX because PFPX already saved the cruise altitude um, that's why it, it's populating there but that is wrong so what we normally fly about 37,000 to uh, Innsbruck or depending on what whatever the dispatch says so uh, all right so that's a very handy one is just saving your route from using something like PFPX or SimBrief or something like that make sure um, you select flight sim simulator and then it just picks up whichever one so we can just quickly choose another one uh, that's Athens to Bergamo click open and there you go you see it's populated everything all you've got to do is just change the aircraft so that you still got to do so 738 all right okay so now that we yeah I'm just going to show you some of the other functions within um, the route setup so the next one is the online network so remember in the settings we added the VATSIM files and you can add the IVAO so what you need to do at the moment is saying disabled what you need to do is click check okay and there you can see use online data from VATSIM if I had the file in the IVAO that wouldn't be grayed out but because there is no file in there that's why it's grayed out okay so VATSIM you can click tick you can tick uh, VATSIM say start and there we go it's picking up all the controllers yeah so you can see everyone so you've got Oslo control Tokyo uh, you've got Melbourne 
Tower on. Sydney Tower is on. Who's on, who's on in the UK? There we go. We've got Exeter, Stansted, Gatwick, Luton. All right, and you just click close, and there you go. VATSIM is enabled, and obviously, if it was IVAO, you would say it would say IVAO. All right, staying on this um, on this page. Next is modify. So if you're not happy with something in your route, you basically just say you don't want to go to Remax. Okay. What you can do is go remove selected waypoint. Okay. It removes it. You've got to click done again, and you've got to activate it again. All right. Or you save it. All right. So that's the modify. It's if there's something you don't like, or if you want to in insert something. Yeah, or an NDB or an airport, whatever. Okay, that's what modify is, and I will come back to modify because there's something else. Uh, if you want to clear it, you just clear it. If you want to start again, and then preview, it gives you a little preview like that, which is. So there we go. We're going from Athens up to Lyme, <laughs> which is Bergamo, northern Italy okay staying on this is save so you can save the flight plan at in different formats so that's what I was saying about the Avlasoft so if we save that okay I'll show you that and we want to save it in a, um, a level D you know the 767 level D we tick whatever ones you want and then you just click OK and then that saves it all right and then you want to activate it as well once you've done all your setting up and your cruise altitude and or you right at the end you click activate and there you go and we'll come back to this I'm going to shoot back to uh, root setup but but there we go there you can see now all the different windows but we'll come back to that in a sec so let's just go back to root setup so remember I saved it as an Avlasoft EFB so if we go back to select now and click EFB route there we go look there we've got we've, we've got it sitting there yeah so you can add so if you want to do that same route again you click open and there you go it's uh, populated everything there for you guys very straightforward if there's still something you don't understand just yeah leave some uh, comments and I'll try help you as best I can all right so once you've done that remember we clicked activate so let's go now to the different displays so the first one is the ground so there you go you can see I've got a ground chart of Athens all right if we click our plane Alright, I'm actually not at Athens, so that's why. Alright, let me change something here quickly. Let me put myself because I am at uh, I'm I am at Gatwick. So let me put myself in at Gatwick. Let's just quickly do this. Uh, there we go. There we go. Activate. Alright, I've actually <laughs> spawned on the runway. Obviously, I'm not going to connect to Vatson, but there you can see. So remember, we added the traffic option in system you need to also have traffic option over there as well all right that means you'll see other planes on VATSIM if you don't have that ticked at the bottom there you won't see other traffic all right and then the wind as well you can see the wind and then the vectors it will give you basically the air, uh, the runway the, towards you with the which which runway which vectors you you going towards so we are going towards 26 right and left yep so that's why it's showing that and then OTPV is I think something to do with traffic as well um, it shows you um, if you're not online I think if you don't connect to VATSIM I think it shows you yes there we go so if we because we're not online it shows you where people are parked so you don't spawn on each other yeah so there you go 
that's what that is okay so that's ground let me just show you a bit more here um, so at the bottom here you've got a zoom in zoom out uh, you got a left arrow right arrow up arrow down arrow and then remember I said you've got the day and night so that's night time and that's daytime yeah I quite like daytime uh, night time I mean sorry yeah it just shows it uh, a lot better okay staying on this screen uh, at the at the top there you got the elevation of the airport you got the transition altitude as well of 6,000 all right I'm not going to talk about Vatson just yet all right so that's ground departure again there's our departure showing our route uh, and I will talk about more detail but let me just show each one you got the en route you got the arrival into Innsbruck uh, you've got an approach and you've got the airport at um, Innsbruck and again you can see if there's anyone there okay we've got one person there all right so that's each of the different displays all right the next thing I want to show you is actually setting up um, a SID and a star now all right so what you want to do is go on to departure so make sure departure is highlighted and then on the left hand side yeah click on EGKK departures and then what you can do is you can see a SID overview or if you know it offhand you can click select SID straight away I 99% of the time know the SID because I get that from PFPX alright but just presume now that we don't know the SID we do know that we are going to be flying towards Dover so our first waypoint is Dover so what we can do is we select SID overview and we know we're flying towards the east so we click departure east all right and then it shows us here now okay it's showing us different SIDs so showing the ones up to Clacton it's showing the ones to Wizard and it's showing the ones to Dover all right we know that we got to choose one of the Dover ones because we are our first waypoint is Dover all right so if you're not sure you can do overview sit overview and you can choose the one and obviously Dover makes them the, the most sense because that's our first waypoint in our in our flight plan all right then we go back to select SID so um, the runway is 26 left so we choose 26 we choose east yeah you can choose the different so if we fly north you can choose north but we know we're flying east and we know we are flying to Dover as well so we can either choose the Dover 1 X-ray or the Dover 8 Mike I think most 99% of the time it's the Dover 8 Mike okay again PFPX will tell you that or if ATC are online they will give you the correct um, the correct uh, SID to go off from all right but we're going to choose Dover 8 Mike we click OK and you can it gives you a preview yes that looks good and you say activate all right it shoots back to there for some reason and there we go back there all right and there it's showing us our SID now fairly straightforward and it gives you the different restrictions as well just uh, while I'm while I'm uh, showing you this I just want to show you down yeah you can see I've got the latest air rack load as well I use the Navigraph air racks so that's it at the bottom there all right so 21st of August to 17th of September so when did that came out what literally a day ago or so yeah so uh, I downloaded mine this morning so there you go all right so that's the departure then en route basically you can see where you are you can see other planes etc if we were logged into Vatsum now you we would see other planes flying around the UK yeah you would see them they'll pick up on the radar on that all right if um, 
if you're not sure if you want to go direct to if you if you're not happy there's something wrong with your plan you can go direct to and you can change the different uh, direct to waypoints so we want to go straight to uh, Remba for example you just click Remba and you can go OK and that will redirect you in that so that's it yeah OK the next now is uh, arrival so we're in arrival now uh, and it's just like uh, departure so you go, go over to Innsbruck arrival if you're not familiar with um, the star you can just go star overview so we're arriving from the north and there it shows you what um, what the star is so it's Tulsa 3A so it's only showing the one so that's going to be the obvious choice so we say select star we choose 26 and there it is there Tulsa 3A okay and we click that and then it shows us there so reroute us you can see that was the original direct straight to the airport but we're now we're going to go on this route so we click activate all right not too sure why that pops back down back to uh, Gatwick all the time there might be something in the in the options there but anyway so there we go you can see it's our uh, there's our star now all right and then the last one is the approach so again we go on the left hand side we select our approach so we've chosen runway 26 we're going to do um, a localizer procedure and the transition is RTT so we've got those three and we click OK and we activate it yeah I'm not sure why it's popping back there all the time but never mind and there we go so it's putting us there's our, our rival into I approach and ILS into uh, Innsbruck all right so a few things to take notice of here so again we've got the elevation of the airport we've got the localizer frequency the approach course uh, the decision height uh, the length of the runway etc etc and then it shows you now the elevation down here as well so you can see that we need to catch basically the localizer uh, around about nine and a half thousand nine thousand to capture and then it shows you all the DMEs as well yeah so you've got different options there as well and then there's a transition altitude there of eleven thousand all right so that's that's pretty much it that's how you set up a route within EFB and those are each of the different tabs you have um, before they go offline I just want to quickly show you how to activate to VATSIM which I think is a fantastic option so let's just click on route here or even departure so we're back in the departure page so I want to show you the VATSIM option now and I think this is absolutely brilliant remember in the route setup or when we were setting up our route uh, we tick the online network remember we put the little tick in there and it's saying VATSIM enable this is why it is showing Gatwick over here because we have that option and also because we are flying from Gatwick to Innsbruck it will only show you who's online from the airport you're flying to and from or if you are flying over that airspace so just for if we zoom out here just say we are flying over what is this Belgium airspace here and just say there's Belgium air traffic control on controlling the whole airspace of Belgium we would then that would then show up as well because our route is taking us um, through that ATC just for example Ireland is online you know we wouldn't it wouldn't show us over here so it will only show us who is online where we f where we flying to and from and if we are flying over that airspace which is very nice as well
Okay, so all you've got to do basically is right click on it. It's that easy. So all you have to say is activate to COM1 and it puts it into your radio stack. So I like it because if I'm flying on VATSIM or um, and I'm streaming and it's really busy and I get ATC telling me please go on to ground frequency 121 decimal 8. I don't have to you know I'm trying to turn I'm trying to land whatever the case may be um, all I've got to do is just right click on this and put it into either put it into my standby or put it into the activate where I don't have to pan down in the cockpit and then start fiddling, fiddling around with the radio buttons and that I can just come here and say activate and it's the same with Unicom if ground say to me uh, Thompson 1415 please uh, no more ATC coverage please uh, change over to 122 decimal 8 Unicom I can then just go right click activate to COM1 and then that's it very very easy and it's the same if you flying whichever whichever display you are in they will always show exactly the same so just say we're in approach and we've got uh, Innsbruck delivery on or tower on what I would do is when um, I either get a private message from them or when I'm just about to hit their airspace I will right click onto their frequency and say activate to COM1 so that is very very handy I love that I really do like that option so alright so the next thing um, I want to show you is what else do I got to show you in airports so again it's just a couple of um, extra options you can click um, yeah you can click ground there and it gives you the taxiway oh yes let me show you this as well I'll show you that in a sec so yeah it's just different type of options where you can activate the different displays and that so this is another handy um, tool as well you, you saw I briefly touched it so select taxiways so again if you're not too familiar um, with you know the airport you're flying to or from um, what you can do you can you can you can get um, EFB to actually guide you towards the stand or to the runway because remember yeah if we go back to ground you can see yeah, that the charts here yeah, aren't great and this is the only real downfall about EFB is that the ground charts aren't fantastic um, I, w I am going to talk about version 2 but I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video so for example there is a scout yeah it looks it looks you know it looks okay but I'm sure there are a lot of things which are wrong in that so what you do is you go back to ground you select taxiway so you want to say taxi to runway okay so just say we are at stand uh, 140 okay and we want to go to um, 26 left all right what happens is ATC now give you a whole lot of different taxiways so they say you go to runway 26 to holding point uh, Alpha via Alpha Alpha November guys I, I don't know exactly what it is but I, I'm just sort of making this up just to show you uh, Alpha Alpha November uh, and Kilo for example okay so that's what they give you you click OK no taxi found all right I know because that that is totally wrong let's just see if we can get this uh, let's try that there it's just, uh, it's just showing you that last bit there so let's so uh, uh, let's do so let's do stand let's just try to do this a little bit differently so stand 42 so November stand 42 let's go stand 42 there we go let's do that uh, and then 42 so we're going to go November uh, stand 42 there we go no it's not showing there so uh, Zulu 
November. All right, let's see if that works. No, it's not working. I think maybe it's because I'm on the runway as well. You guys get the picture. Yeah, you guys. To be honest, I don't. I don't use this very often, but it's just another option for you guys. Yeah. All right, so you can act, uh, you can access the the taxiways, and then it's the same thing if you want to go to the parking as well. So we've just come off at uh, runway eight right, and we want to go to gate five. All right, and ATC give you hotel kilo Mike November. You click OK, and then you see no, they they're not connected. That's why that's why they're not really showing. All right, uh, again the meta I showed you that earlier. That's the meta for Gatwick. Uh, let's go back to and then airport information. That just gives you a bit more info about um, Gatwick communications. All right, it's giving you all the different uh, frequencies for all Gatwick. General information, next sunset, next sunrise, longest a runway. All right. And guys, that's pretty much it. That's 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 everything. Well, that's what I use. Again, if there's guys who use other options who can suggest something, please leave comments. But that's how I use EFB. And as I said, I absolutely love it. Um, it's it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I hope I covered everything for you guys, what you wanted to know. If you want to know something else, um, again, leave it in the comments um, and that would be much appreciated. Um, I am now going to stop the video for a half a minute and I'm going to start it and I'm going to show you the data provider. Hi right, guys, welcome back. So we're now in the data provider and I want to show you a couple of things in here. So settings. First one, communication. If you're running on a network PC, just make sure you set it to any. The rest is all default. Simulator, all right. EFB now supports P3D, but you've got to have version two or higher. So if you're still running 1.4, it ain't going to work. So you've got to have two or higher. All right. And the other thing is once you change the simulator, so if you change it from FSX to P3D, you've got to restart this data provider. It basically rebuilds the database. All right. So just make sure you do that as well. And then as I said, you can cross over to P3D if you're flying. I'm starting to fly P3D now, so I need to just set this up so I can use EFB in my P3D. So you just make sure that little radio button is ticked there and the installation folder is pointing to your P3D uh, folder as well, yeah. And I think that is just default load update Garmin GPS system, yeah. That is just default. Okay straightforward easy navigation data you can either use aerosoft nav data pro or the navigraph fms data i use navigraph and it's just pointing to my e fsx a avlasoft folder and again if you're running nav data pro just make sure you it's uh, it's mapped to your nav data pro yeah and then select provider to use again Aerosoft Net Data Pro or Navigraph. I'm using Navigraph. And if you're using um, Navigraph or, or Avlasoft, just make sure that it's pointing to Avlasoft folder, not the Nav Data or Sid Stars. All right, make sure it's pointing and showing you the arrow there. It won't work if you sort of map it to the Nav Data, so it needs to be one above those. Okay, shortcuts. Um, I don't use shortcuts, um, and you can only use shortcuts if uh, the display unit um, is on the same computer as the data provider. Mine's on a network PC, that's why I don't use shortcuts. So I can actually untick that. Uh, and then miscellaneous is, I think this is all default. I haven't changed any of this. Play sound on error. Yeah, I. Uh, I actually haven't changed any of this. All right, and then that's it. Um, 
okay not going to show you about or info that is basically just showing my serial number and it's telling me the latest build as well um, data so basically under data you've got simulator scenery data update so if you buy any scenery or any airport you've got to run the simulator scenery data update yeah so any new scenery or airport you've got to click on this and then it says there updating creating the data is require restart of the data provider do you want to update create now I'm going to say no so basically by running that again it just adds all the latest um, airport files it, it gives you the proper stand numbers the taxiways all that type of thing so just say we buy um, Flight Tampa are bringing out the new Sydney. You know, they, they, they're going to be launching um, Sydney in Australia. So if I buy that now today, and I've installed it now, so what I do is I just click data, and I click that, and I say yes. And then basically what happens is EFB will just recognize all those new stand numbers. It, it picks up all that from uh, from the database. So that's very handy um, AR aircraft monitor you know what I've actually I don't think I've ever used this or know what it's actually for so I'm not even going to talk about that and then file a stop and quit and that's it guys that's uh, Avila soft EFB I've showed you the data Provider, I've showed you display unit, I've showed you how to set up route, how to do your SIDs, your stars, um, how to add charts. Um, as I said earlier, if there's anything you're not sure of, please leave something in the comments. If you've got a suggestion for me or if I haven't done something right, again guys, please leave some feedback. Um, the last thing I wanted to say was, um, and I've made people aware on my Twitch stream is that there is a new version of Avalosoft EFB coming out. The last time um, I heard an update or last time I saw an update was it was quite a while back actually. I think it was January or maybe even last year. Um, I think it might have even been last year but there hasn't been an update for, for a little while. Um, I know there is a new version, version 2 coming out and I believe uh, Urs, the guy who's developing this, has made some really good changes. Um, it's it's a, a whole new redesign. There's, there's, uh, yeah, there's loads of new things coming out. Um, so what I want to say is as much as I love this product and I highly recommend you go buy it, I don't want you guys just just be careful that's what I'm trying to say is don't go and buy the version which you can get now um, and then in a in a month two months time a new version comes out so just be careful with that um, I did read that if you are an existing user of EFB that you will get a discount so that's that's not set in stone so don't hold me to that um, but I did I did read that there was something about that um, that if you are an existing user of EFB you will get some sort of discount um, to purchase the new one so just be aware that there is a new version coming out I doubt we, doubt it we'll see it this year um, maybe in the new year I hope so um, and that's it really um, what are, what else the price was 46 pounds or about 76 77 dollars there is a um, a demo on the website I'll put the website below you can see the link there uh, there's a, a 30 day demo try it and I'll tell you right now that after a couple of days you will go and buy this trust me you will but go and download the demo and test it out for yourself okay guys that's it um, thank you very much please remember to share the video to give a thumbs up leave comments if there's something you don't like tell me as well 
it only makes me uh, improve the next video if, if you leave positive or negative feedback um, it just uh, it just helps me uh, for the next video uh, the next video I'm going to do is plan G uh, I'm going to try get that out in the next couple of days um, but guys thank you very much for watching take it easy happy flying enjoy EFB it is fantastic and I will catch you soon take care bye bye